Hello and welcome to the 20th video in this series, Programming Simple Floppy Robin for Android. So a short little video here. Um, you should be at the stage now where you have Eclipse and Simple Floppy Robin and lo the Cocos TDX library inside Eclipse, whether you're on Windows, Linux or Mac, so everything will be pretty much the same now from now on in terms of the IDE because we'll be working inside Eclipse. Um, I, did, I did the Mac setup video and I also said I'd do a Windows setup video. Well, a little rant coming now for a minute. I tried to do that yesterday evening and the process went something like this over the space of five hours. Um, download the packages, extract them, then I find I have to install SIGWIN, then the computer decides it needs to install updates, gigabytes of updates, which is just phenomenal. The updates fail, then the computer crashes, then they reinstall. Then I plug in my Nexus 7, it doesn't detect it, I go on the internet, I find there are at least a million other people with exactly the same problem, with hundreds of solutions. After about an hour of tearing my hair out, I finally got the tablet to be detected properly by Windows. Then I started Eclipse, then I, f after two or three crashes, I think, got the project imported and built. And then when I built it, I tried to export the APK to put on the tablet and Eclipse crashed. I tried it again and it crashed. And to be honest, I spent the entire evening um, of my free time trying to get that installed on Windows and gave up in disgust. And the whole time this was happening, of course, my hard drive never stopped whirring on that computer. So I, I used to swear by Windows, to be honest, and now I swear at it whenever I have to use it. So if you really, really want the video for the Windows setup, then put a comment in the comments section, because I'm not really enthusiastic to do one. And I did search on YouTube, and there are already some other very good videos that describe the setup anyway. So you should be able to arrive at this stage without any problems particularly if you watch the Mac video, because the process is actually really similar. It's just you've got to install something called SIGWIN on Windows, uh, which makes things a little bit more complicated. In fact, the, one of the best videos I saw, the guy at the start actually acknowledged that Windows is the worst um, basis for doing Android and Cocos 2DX programming. My opinion, Android in general, but that's another opinion. Okay, rant over with. Good. So in this video, all we're going to do is, you'll notice some, some things have changed from the last import. The last import had Android version 4.4, I think, here. And that's because I was just checking things were okay uh, before starting this video. What you need to do is start the Android SDK manager with this button up here. And this is what you use to, use to download the various versions of Android that you want to build your app against. And the point is, is by default, uh, Cocos 2D uh, X is against API 8 minimum version. The problem is, is Android 2.2 doesn't allow us to use the new version of gay Google Play services. Well, it, you can, but not all of the, the features that we'll want to use, which is eventually accessing a leaderboard scores so we can make sure that our scores on our device are up to date and vice versa and things like this. And we need a minimum really of API 10. So if you don't have this installed, so the status uh, doesn't say install, <coughs> excuse me, say installed next to these, then please take these packages and install them. The other thing you'll need is these APIs extras here. You'll need the play services installed, support library installed, and also the licensing library installed. The billing library you don't need because we're not going to put any billing inside this application. We will, however, put an advert banner. So once you've downloaded and installed those packages, you can close the SDK manager and you should, you should have the status then with all the installed here and maybe also restart ADT or Eclipse, however you want to call it, to make sure everything's loaded there correctly. So what we need to do then is change the application to actually use this. All we need to do is change this 8 to a 10 and save. And the other thing we need to do then, or you'll need to do, I've already done it though, is right click on Simple Floppy Robin, select Properties, and in the Android section, you've got the build target here. Uncheck whatever is checked and make sure that um, the Google API is 2.3.3 is checked, not the Android 2.3.3, because we'll be using some APIs inside there. Hit OK, and then I would recommend just going to Project and then Clean and Cleaning All Projects and just let everything build away to make sure that uh, everything is working correctly. Okay. All right then, so that's 
it then for this video. I'll tell you what, let's just um, go to Android Tools and I'm going to export a signed application package just to check everything's working okay. I've made uh, Robin underscore key store so things are a little bit a little easier to to read. That's the key store I'm going to use. I've got a Robin key inside there set up in the way we did in the previous video and I'm going to call this simple floppy Robin and I'm going to call the APK10 for version 1.0 and hit finish. And then off screen from you, I'm just going to navigate whilst that's building to the directory for the APK and then I'll install it. And you'll have a bit of a pause in the video now because it's going to take a while to actually compile and build. Okay, so that's actually compiled and built and you'll see inside tutorial clips here that I have Simple Floppy Robin 1.0 APK but before we install that I'm actually going to go back into the code and let's just make a couple of corrections to the code. I think I made a comment in the comment section. Inside constants.h we have here the time in seconds that each object should take to move across the screen and I said that didn't need scaling well of course it needs scaling by the X because if you have a narrower screen then it's um, the speed is going to uh, appear to be slower because there are less pixels that it's covering in the same amount of time and vice versa so we actually need that those to be multiplied by scale X what I really should have done was put all of these in pixels per second anyway rather than calculate it inside the um, the class file itself but it doesn't matter so this scales the speed correctly and the other thing also was the font if I remember correctly and that's also a constant and it's marker felt but now what we want is uh, fonts forward slash and marker felt dot ttf like this and this should now load up the correct font so I'm just going to go back to Simple Floppy Robin Android Tools and Export Signed Application Package with the key store and using the Robin key and I'll just go to the same APK so that's uh, APK 1.0 and then we can install it on the device it's just compiling down the bottom hopefully it's not compiling everything again no it's not good <laughs> should be finished any seconds okay that seems to be done so what I can do now is I've already prepared on the terminal the ADB install dash R just click uh, check the device is uh, connected so just hit enter and that should then start installing which means I need to fetch my camera and record another little movie and hopefully things are working with the correct font as well so success so let's have a look at the device so here we are then with simple floppy robin and let's start at the application and we have simple floppy robin and now you can see quite clearly can I move the camera in a bit closer that the font is now set correctly uh, with the settings there and also, and oh, I can't do this looking through the camera. Hang on, I'm going to have to look around the. Okay, the speed is what it is, but I'll make the assumption now that the speed is okay. Okay, then, so stop that movie there. And that's it then for this video. Um, in the next video, then, we'll actually get on with uh, looking at how we code between the Java level and the C++ level and videos sort of return back to normal with getting on with some coding rather than fiddling about. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.